Hello students, welcome back to the organ printing course. So in this lecture, uh, we'll discuss what is required and how to print an organ. So here we'll see the different approaches required for printing an organ or even uh, what are the different strategies. Before that, what is an organ? What are the different structural characteristics of, an, of, of a particular organ and what is required what are the things that we need for printing an organ? So we'll discuss all these things in the lecture, in this lecture. Let us first start with the very basic question that is, what is, what is an organ? And if we understand the structure and function of a particular organ, then probably we can design or develop the strategy to bioprint particular that particular organ in a, in a effect in an effective way so so that's why understanding the structure and function of a, an organ before actually going to bioprint that is very important and in this lecture we'll discuss that thing so organs are if you see uh, human body is human body composed of different types of tissues and organs. So multiple organs work in simultaneously and in tandem like together to run the run our body. Right? So this way so they have all the different organs they have a typical 3D structures. So like if you see each of these organs they have a characteristic or uh, they have a detailed structure very complex sometimes the tissue some of the organs are very complex in nature so they have a typical micro and macro structure that is required to fulfill the function of that particular tissue so they have a characteristic micro and macro structure for, for function of that particular organ like heart is a four chamber organ where it basically it receives the blood and then pump the blood to the whole body right so that's why heart has typical a typical structure of the heart is like that similarly liver has a typical architecture and if you it's typical macro macro structure and if you see the microstructure of the liver then they are composed of hexagonal units that is called lobules and so millions of these lobules are connected to each other then the whole liver develops because the main function of the liver is the the metabolism of the food guys metabolism the food food for food and drugs that is that we mostly that we ingest and that that we then then they produce this thing they produce the energy then they produce the different other components that goes to the blood and that goes to the all the, all the other organs and tissues of the body so so typically each of these tissues they have the specific or characteristic micro and macro structure and we need to understand that before actually we delve into bioprinting of all this uh, all that particular tissue and organs another thing is this if in our body all the tissues and organs if we can divide them based on the cellular and acellular components then we can actually basically find out, find out that that the all the tissues and organs actually they have multiple cell types and also there are other things that is outside the cell that is the present there is the more this means more material aspect that is extracellular matrix. So our body, if we can divide our body into two parts, the, the cellular components where the, all the cell, different cell types will be there, and then the acellular component that is the extracellular matrix. That is extracellular matrix. So the extracellular matrix is basically they it is composed of different types of proteins, carbohydrate, and in adverse tissue fat, and other type of material, and then it basically it provides the housing, provides the housing of the cells. It also support cell attachment, proliferation, migration, so subcellular so functions, so all these things are actually extracellular matrix provides all these things. So that's why there's all the different tissues, but the extracellular matrix composition and the composition can vary from one tissue to another tissue, and also the proportion of all these different components can vary from tissue to tissue. Like Suppose uh, that 
the tissue one tissue or other tissue suppose they have similar type of extracellular matrix components but the proportion can vary also the arrangement of this all these extracellular matrix components the microstructure is typically that can vary right other than that most of the organs they have they have the various compartments and they also perform different functions something like suppose pancreas pancreas to, uh, pancreas does both exocrine and endocrine functions so but the, they have there are separate compartments to perform this function suppose exocrine functions they are they produce different types of enzymes so that can help in digestion and, and, and absorption but the endocrine function where the hormones are basically produced and those hormones basically function you know that that the different like insulin glucose all these hormones are produced by the brain uh, uh, by the this organ and then it basically this it helps in doing like sugar for sugar metabolism and for other thing it can help in this all these things so this way so different organs they have a different compartments for passing suppose kidney kidney had different or uh, different compartments like this glomerulus in this loop a collecting tubule all these things are ascending to ascending to and this the descending one all these things so different different components are present and they all fun function different things so we need to understand the, the various compartments of this thing of this particular tissue and what are the cell 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 different cell types present in that particular compartment because that is very specific for a function of that particular tissue so that is very important for their understanding right now other than that also uh, this all this this structural elements of this or particular organ this there is a complexity so there is some some amount of complexity present within within the all the different types of structural elements that can range from micro to nano right so different structural elements suppose the different extracellular matrix component so they have a typical microstructure also they have a typical nano structure so this starting from this even if you see the structure then there is a macro to nano different levels of complexity present in a particular tissue in the particular organ so that can to reproduce or to replicate that kind of detailed complexity at different length like the nano, starting from nano to macro that is very required which required for to generate or to reproduce the function of a particular function of a particular organ right then the other thing is that if you see different the day organs they also have some microstructural units like liver liver has a liver the microstructure liver unit of the liver is the lobule so lobule which is mostly it's a hexagonal unit where the cellular organization is very very different so that that's why that all these different microstructure units they have a unique cellular composition and organization so that is very deep that is very much required to reproduce when we are trying to print an organ and all these organs they also have a unique extracellular matrix component with nano to micro microstructural details like starting from it can be from anywhere between nano nano to micro in that range so this extracellular matrix different extracellular matrix components like collagen gag fibronectin lam laminin different are the different there are various types of uh, hyaluronic acid is also hyaluronic acid is present in the cartilage ecm and most in other like in skin and other tcm so those different types of extracellular matrix component they have a typical nanostructure and microstructure detail so that has a way need to understand and if you are using some biomaterials then mimicking that aspect of that mimicking that aspect like this structural de details is very much important for for bioprinting also in our body we have a very large very large and very complex vascular network by which most of the cells in our body they are getting nutrition oxygen and also the waste product is getting washed away from the cells because of this vascular network so the vascular network is the driving force of our all different all the of our body's function all the different tissues and organs so this vascular network because of the vascular network the all the different organs they can sustain because we have a complex vascular network so when you are trying to uh, 3d bioprint an organ we need to understand or we need to replicate that kind of vascular network 
in our bioprinted tissue or organ so that that bioprinted tissue or construct can be sustained over it over time they can the cells can be viable they can do their function and also uh, the whole organ can get the whole organ can be developed so so that's why in any bioprinting task when you start a bioprinting task understanding the structural complexity the structure organizing the microstructure nanostructure and also the organization of different cells different cellular compositions how they are arranged and also what is the extracellular matrix component that is the material aspect of the cell what are the different extracellular matrix component they have how those major how those uh, extracellular matrix components arranged or organized in within the tissue and also in a tissue or organ these extracellular matrix component they are come that their organization arrangement can also vary from one part of the tissue to another part of the tissue or organ so we need to understand those things and we need to study in great detail of about all these things before even we start bioprinting of a particular tissue or organ so these all points are very important for a for a for organ bioprinting or any kind of bioprinting targeting to develop some tissues or organs and that's why most of the time the researcher in tissue engineering or bioprinting this they look the organ embryonic organ development as a as a driving factor or strategy how or to understand how this organ embryonic organ development actually happens and then take clues to to take clues from there to use or implement that for organ bioprinting so if you see in your organ embryonic organ development entire human body develops from a single fertilized egg that is the very first thing we know that when the sperm meets the ovum and then it is if it when it is fertilized then it produces that from there the blastocyst and other things start forming so that's why from single fertilized egg egg the whole thing so that it that divides and mature and then again that differentiate to develop the whole whole type of different types of tissues and organs so that that's why organ development in an embryonic thing it takes nano to macro approach so that means starting from a very small by very small single cell to a macro tissue macro organ or the whole body human body develops that's it that's typically a nano to macro approach and then only the cells the earliest cells present in that in that fertilized eggs like the, when they are at the very initial stage they grow and differentiate and use their inherent machinery to form a nano to micro structure of the cell that means the cells they produce their own extracellular matrix using their own machinery your inner machinery the cells they have they have this they have the capability to produce a different extracellular matrix component because by this way they can actually they can pattern they can arrange organize the different extracellular matrix in a nano to micro structure so that 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 is helpful for the particular tissue or organ development so along with the development of this thing uh, along with the development of this uh, the cells when they are growing they also need so means they need oxygen nutrition to sustain their growth that's why for providing this essential nutrients and growth factors to the growing tissue and organs within the, when they are in case of embryonic tissue to organ development then capillary networks also develop along with this thing along with angiogenesis that means angiogenesis is a sprouting up new blood vessels from the existing one so that 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 actually helps to grow the tissue that to help to grow the help to provide nutrition and our growth fact nutrition oxygen growth factor to the growing tissue or organs another interesting thing happens another interesting thing happens in case of embryonic organ development is different organs they develop simultaneously and in tandem that means all different is if you see in the embryonic development that is from the very first 
very earlier tissues very earlier few cell types then the whole different tissues or whole different organs develop simultaneously and along with each other so that is very that is very much important to the for to understand and also very important to how basically what are the different forces what are the different signals that that generally help in this process like to uh, for this organ uh, this organ generous organ development we need to understand that so that we can if we can implement that in our bioprinting then then that can be a major breakthrough and that can be a major advantage for functional tissue or organ development and other things is like this the meso and macrostructural anatomy organizes as the organ prepares to perform its intended function that means for as we have also discussed in our earlier lectures that because all the typically different tissues and organs they have a characteristic micro and macro structure that is required to fulfill the function of that particular organ so that's why this whenever this the structure of the tissue or organ develop develops over time within the development of this in the embryonic development stages that time this meso and microstructure anatomy they organize it themselves so that that function of the particular tissue or organ can be performed so this is the so uh, embryonic organ organ development always helps to understand how a how the tissue development process actually happen and we can basically mimic if we can mimic that kind of process that is very helpful for our organ development now let us understand what the things if we are trying to do do for bioprinting then what is the what are the things that is this is that one should consider for organ printing like very first thing so the histology and anatomy in general that is very much important to understand like the how the what is the histology of the tissue that means what is the structure of the tissue how the cells are arranged in that what is the anatomy of that particular tissue so we need to understand that first and then we have then accordingly we have to find figure out what type of cells to be used like what are the different cell types present and how they are arranged all these things we need to understand so that we can actually basically for bioprinting as you know for bioprinting cells are the primary primary requirement that is because without cells we cannot print a tissue structure so the cells we have to understand what are the different cell types present and how they are arranged and we have to get those cells or we have to use those cells for, for our bioprinting work the next thing is the conservation of the structure and function of a particular tissue or organ as we have discussed in the last slide then each of these tissue they have their own structure and because of this structure the, the function generally develops that's why what type of scaffolding should be printed and what technology should be used that is the next thing you should answer and is next thing you should think like like different scaffolding techniques can be so what scaffolding technique means with pie printing we can basically we can print different types of structures that is helpful for that so that can be that is helpful for developing of the particular tissue or organ so that structure we need to suppose we need to print then what type of what technology should be used because we have discussed in our earlier by printing classes this that different types of tissue structures can be uh, or tissue structures or architectures can be printed by different by printing technology with diff, with with starting from low with low to high resolution so something like in lip bioprinting or inkjet bioprinting the high very high resolution structures can be printed and extrusion bioprinting may be probably the low resolution structures can be printed so that what that's what we need to we need to also understand what type of technologies required to fulfill your target tissue or organ bioprinting similarly when when uh, we are thinking about developing the nano or macro approach for human organ develop development then that's what 
when then we also have to do this we create that kind of structure nano to macro structure with nano to micro architecture or structures so so different biomaterials can be employed to mimic that nano or micro structures to replicate the nano and macro approach for human organ development that means because biomaterials they have a typical typical structure and different biomaterials if you can study them well then we can understand the different biomaterials they have their own microstructures or nanostructure something like suppose in our in our tissue or organ suppose some organ the collagen is a biomaterial collagen is a material protein that is present in most of our tissues in the in the ecm extracellular matrix so that collagen typically the structure of the collagen it, it is like it is it has a nano dimension typically some nano dimension and then they produce the collagen fibers that is in the in, in, in micro dimension so if we can use the several biomaterials that can mimic that nano or micro structures of that particular particular tissue and then so that we can replicate the nano and macro approach for the human organ development other than these things the cells basically in the in the, in the when you put the cells together they generally they have this intelligence so that they can assemble together they can drive the tissue formation that means the cells can assemble they they come together they produce their own extracellular matrix and then they can build the tissue but certain essential cues are required to guide or facilitate that cellular assembly so that a particular functional microstructural elements of a organ development or of a tissue development can be possible so this is this is another thing where where also biomaterials can help to provide that guidance students for the cellular assembly in certain cases the bioprinting strategy can guide the cellular assembly when we put suppose in case of inkjet printing or in case of laser assisted bioprinting we can do this thing we can provide the cell we could provide the cells with certain means suppose if we print the cells in a certain pattern or these things where they can put them close to each other suppose they are creating a spherical pattern so then what will happen these cells they can assemble with each other they can assemble to the next one the cells can sense the, the presence of another cells in the nearby and they can assemble together and then they can produce this functional microstructure and element units and that can help into the tissue building so the proper placement of biomaterials is necessary to direct cell assembly, cellular self assembly and organ development so that's why when you are going, working with bioprinting the placement or positioning of this biomaterial in in that in a particular coordinate or in the tissue structure is very very important so that that can guide or direct the cellular self assembly or organ development these things are very very important for to understand to, to consider well going for organ printing now the other thing other thing one should also uh, decide or choose what type of biometry bioprinting modalities to be used like if you know that different bioprinting modalities they have their own advantages and disadvantages and we have discussed in great detail in our earlier study in our bioprinting lectures where we have seen that what is what are the capabilities or limitations of all these different bioprinting modalities suppose some biomet some by uh, some bioprinting technology where the resolution is very very high but the speed is not that, that, that great or that cannot be used for printing a centimeter scale size tissue but certain bioprinter where the resolution can be this is not very high it's a kind of role is just structures but but the uh, we can definitely reach the centimeter level tissue structure so that so we need to consider all these things but most all these things bioprinting technology mostly they take a macro to micro approach for organ development because where we are starting with because we are positioning the cells or we can or we are positioning biometrics we are padding biometrics in the 
micro scale to recreate the geometry of the or microstructure of that particular organ so that we can come up with a macro level tissue. So that's why bioprinting basically in all bioprinting test approaches we take this macro to micro approach where we want to create something macro but we start from micro so that we can come up with this thing and most of the time that is done by suppose we can with the by different by imaging modalities like CT, MRI we can actually image or capture the three-dimensional geometry of that particular tissue and organ and from there we can again recreate the anatomy of that tissue and organ with a from that same from the same CT or MRI data convert them convert them into a into a uh, CAD format that means the CT or MRI that is available in the in, in DICOM format from their DICOM format we can convert them into STL format in the in, by using certain some CAD software and then then we can actually uh, we can design that CAD model so that it can that model can be used for generating the uh, generating the or 3D print by printing the that particular tissue structures. So from the CT MRI that is the data that 3D imager that is available in Daikin format we convert them into STL format in CAD and that STL data can be used for bioprinting directly for bioprinting of that particular tissue structure. So there that microstructure digitalization can be preserved and that can we can use that those things for generating recreating or reproducing that microstructure of the particular tissue or organ. So by, that's why bioprinters, they replicate the micro and mesostructure resolution by dealing with the CAD models. The CAD model, they use that CAD models where these features are preserved in the CAD model and that CAD model when you use that with the bioprinters, then we can definitely we can replicate that kind of micro or mesostructure resolution. Certain bioprinters, they are where the resolution is not that great but they can work on or where by which we can work on that centimeter level size of tissue but certain by bioprinting modalities where the resolution is very high certain like something like the 20 micron or so resolution we can definitely reach using with inkjet or if bioprinting with very high so that there we can basically place or position the cells in a very detailed way or in a particular coordinate required coordinate where they are like suppose they are very much required to be printed so that kind of we can control the positioning of these cells at a certain location so that we can create that localized environment of the particular tissue structure that that is very much required for bioprinting of this thing so that's why you need to select a particular type of bioprinting for a particular type of strategy or printation Highest resolution bioprinting methods are also limited in replication the microstructure anatomy with high fidelity. Though different bioprinting they can do this job, like they can be used for microstructural detailing or also to or also to uh, bioprint macro tissue structures, but there is still there are some limitations limitation where even with the highest resolution bioprinting methods also we cannot replicate the microstructure anatomy with high fidelity something because the tissue their microstructure details are sometimes it is too complex that we cannot actually recreate that microstructure complexity with even the highest resolution bioprinting available methods available but that's like but that is the technological limitation and probably we need there are there's some research work already going in that into that direction where by which we can basically develop some strategy by which we can be able to recreate that complexity so microstructural complexity of the particular tissue structure so uh, for bioprinting so that is this is very important for bioprinting we take a macro to micro approach for bar biometrics and self assembly where nano to meso approach can be used and but if both both these things can must work in harmony so that with bioprinting when we are working with bioprinting using certain biomaterials or certain cell different cell types 
then we should work in that those approaches should work in harmony so that finally the a, a macro level of tissue can be bioprinted with microstructures having nanostructural details so this is that is very important for organ function and if you see more and more of this organ 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 microstructure of the organ then you will be more miss you will be amazed to see the detailing that is present and that is very much important for that organ that organ level function of that the function of the particular tissue is organs